Hello, welcome to the webinar. This is Steve Bizanov from Media Services. Today's webinar is Rethink Your Workflow with the Amdu. And just so you know, uh, we're going to go through the webinar. You have the ability to put questions, uh, key them in to the question box, and we will answer as many questions as possible. We will answer the questions at the end of the uh, webinar. And if we don't get to your questions, uh, they are all recorded and we will be able to get back to you directly. Okay. Um, so today we have Mick O'Callaghan from Yamdu, who's going to walk us through uh, Yamdu and uh, try to teach you about the system. Uh, everybody is quickly moving towards digital. This is a digital production management system, which uh, many people around the world are, are using. So, Mick, I'm going to hand it over to you, and uh, here you go. Okay, uh, thank you, Steve, for the introduction, and uh, thanks to everyone for joining today. You're very welcome to the demonstration. Uh, as Steve said, I'm Mick from Yamdu. I'm with the sales and marketing team, and I'll give you an overview of what Yamdu is, what it does, and can take some questions at the end if anyone wants some additional information. Um, so just to give you a quick overview before we jump in, uh, Yamdu is a cloud-based production management system for every type of visual project. So whether you are working on film or TV or uh, commercials or documentaries, Yamdu has the tools you need to manage everything effectively in one place. And what we try to provide is a system that takes production management capabilities from lots of different systems, and brings them all under one roof uh, so that you can manage things and communicate and collaborate effectively. So uh, just to kind of start off here, I'll just give you a kind of a brief overview of some key things about Yamdu. And the first thing is that, you know, we're the smart remote working solution. And obviously that's something that's foremost in a lot of people's minds, especially uh, in creative industries right now. What we do is we offer uh, the ability to work with all content types and all positions and departments. So it really is a tool for the entire team. Um, and we cover all steps and stages of any kind of visual production. Um, we contain all of the key general tools uh, like calendar management and uh, scheduling and planning, as well as film specific tools like creating uh, call sheets and breakdowns and shooting schedules and production calendars. And our uh, system works across all devices and browsers. It's responsive so that no matter where you are or what device you're working on, you can use Yamdu to manage your production and communicate with your fellow crew members. Um, also, just to kind of give you a very clear sense of what we want to do with the system, our aim, first and foremost, I think, is to eliminate redundant work, of which there is a lot on any production. Um, you know, there are a lot of Excel sheets, there is a lot of reduplication, um, and we, there's a lot of mundane things that could be better organized and better managed. So that's one thing. We also want to simplify boring and difficult work. And of course, again, on any production, there's a lot of this. And what our system tries to do is make sure that you can do things more effectively each time you work on something within the system. Um, of course, we want to streamline workflows so that Yamdu provides a very clear structure for managing the entire production and improved efficiency across the entire project is the uh, goal at the end of everything once you use Yamdu for a project. So just to give you a few examples here of some of the advantages of using the system, you can see that you know we want to take things from hours to minutes, uh, especially in relation to some of the key things you have to do in a project. And you can see that's things like the script breakdown, uh, casting information, sharing it with producers and clients, and uh, creating shortlists for teams and things like this. So that's just a visualization to give a sense of the advantages of using a system like Yamdu. So basically, uh, that's just a kind of a quick overview of what Yamdu is and what it does. Uh, what I will be doing. Uh, as we move forward is showing you some more specific things. But also I just want to show you quickly that obviously uh, something that is in the minds of a lot of people right now is COVID-19 and the effects on film production that this has. So I really want to stress some of the key features of Yamdu and how it helps when you're working on remote projects. So uh, I'll show you that as we move forward, but I think the communication and collaboration side is important. Yamdu is a file sharing hub and obviously the real-time scheduling information that is shared with everyone across the team and across the production. 
So uh, I'll also show you some upcoming things and some of the things that are on our roadmap for the rest of this year and into 2021 at the uh, end of the demonstration. But right now I'm going to jump directly into Yamdu and show you exactly what it looks like and how it works. So the first thing you can see here is the overview area. And Yamdu allows you to work on multiple projects at once. So you can see here that, first of all, you have an overview of all of the projects that you're working on right now, no matter how many there may be. You can see all of the events and meetings that you're involved in, and you can see the tasks that you're involved in and that you've created yourself. So every person, every user has their own individualized um, overview page where they can very quickly get a sense of where they are across multiple projects. And also before jumping into one project, you get an overview of the calendar that you're working with. So right here, I can see the different production steps and stages and the different meetings and events that are happening across multiple projects at any given time. And also to make my life easier, I can filter this information. If I only want to see things about you know, certain projects, for example, I can filter out anything that isn't relevant. I can search for uh, specific categories that might be relevant to me. And I can also see what the calendar looks like for a specific user, just to get a sense of you know, what someone is working with or how busy they might be at a certain point in time. So I think that's an important tool. When it comes to managing the information you add in each of your projects, we have a company database. And in this company, Bird Productions, you can see, for example, that first of all, we can directly add the employees and staff of the production company and also assign administrators. And administrators in Yamdu can pretty much see and do everything. Uh, they have access to uh, pretty much uh, everything across all of the projects, whereas the employees and staff will only see what uh, they are allowed to see as dictated by their position. So you can manage that first of all. You can also, of course, see the people you are working with. You have a full address book of all of the people you've worked with across all of your projects. So that means that when you add someone to one project, they will be in your database for good. And you can reuse that information on future projects whenever you need to. All of the key information is re re retained, um, which makes it very easy to move forward without uh, reduplication and working a lot uh, are doing a lot of redundant work. So you have that. The same idea goes for your actor locations, costumes, and uh, prop databases because all of this information is saved and is reusable. So again, any actor I've worked with previously is in my database and I can reuse their information. And as well as that, I can filter to find uh, you know, certain criteria in relation to an actor or an actress I may be looking for on a future project. Uh, I can you know, filter by age range or talents or uh, different criteria that I think is important here just to find exactly who it is I'm looking for. And as well as this, the same goes for your locations database. You can see all of your locations, first of all, and you can also filter information. And for example, you can search for a location near a specific place where you are right now, or you know, within 50 kilometers of Paris or Rome or anywhere else on earth. And of course, you can also tag these so that you can search for certain types of locations whenever you need to. Um, and also it's important to note that you can create project templates as well. So if you're making documentaries, for example, you can make the first one. If you like the structure, you can reuse that for future projects with the same production steps and stages, uh, the same uh, files and documents system uh, and things like this. So I'll show you how that works as well as we move forward. But I think it's important to note that you have this database, you have the overview, and when you're ready, you can jump directly into one of your projects. And the one I'm going to use today for most of the demonstration will be Love at Sunset. It's a feature movie project, but I think the actual type of project isn't the most important thing right now because it just showcases the structure of Yamdu for any kind of project you might be working on. So the first thing you can see here is that we have our project dashboard. And again, each user has their own one uh, to work with with information that is relevant to them. They can see, for example, some prompts from Yamdu based on the type of project they're working on. If it's a feature movie, you might be prompted to import a script, for example, but of course it will be very different for a project that is more shot-based or that is working with content items, something we'll see later on. So you have that. Again, you can see the tasks you have on this specific project. You can mark objects that you want to keep track of so that if any changes occur in something that you need to be aware of, you can make sure that you tell Yamdu, fill me in every time something changes in relation to this thing. And also you have what's going on, which is essentially a live feed 
of uh, everything that's happening right now in the production. So that is your dashboard. Just to show you one last uh, structural thing before we move into the key tools, the project settings in YAM do allow you to scale up and scale down in relation to the tools you actually need on a project. And what I mean by that is that you can choose the functions here that are relevant to the project you're working on. So for example, if you're making a documentary and you don't require costumes, you can deactivate this and it will disappear from your sidebar so that you're only working with the tools you actually need. And even if you deactivate something, no information is lost and you can always reactivate it at any point in the future again. So I think that is important. We also have the ability to work with episodic features, of course, to support TV shows or any kind of format uh, or program structure that requires this, whether it's all uh, episodes or whether it's a shooting block. Um, and also you can see here that when you export information in Yamdo, you can generate your own PDF header and uh, you know design it whatever way you, uh, or however you wish it to appear. And basically, whenever you generate any uh, PDF files from the information in Yamdo, it will have the company, your company's information uh, clearly displayed just to make everything look professional. And also from a security point of view, you can watermark files very carefully. So you can have a default watermark, like the name of the current user, or you can create specialized ones uh, for whatever reason. So there are a couple of the key things in Yamdo. One last thing is that uh, Yamdo is designed to serve many different um, projects in many different areas. And to kind of uh, facilitate that, you have the option within the system to uh, you know, choose, first of all, the language that you would wish to use for the interface. So you can see that you can work with eight different languages currently. It's very useful if there are multinational productions. Of course, right now that might not be as relevant as it would have been in the past, but hopefully in the future, again, there will be uh, situations like that with international co-productions. So I think that's important. And also you can see that when it comes to notifications, you can tell Yamdo how to communicate with you. You can decide what information you want to receive email or push notifications about, and you can turn these on and off as necessary, depending on how you want that to be organized. And of course, you can turn off notifications for certain projects or for marked objects. So again, just to make your life easier that you're not inundated with messages you don't find uh, interesting or that are not particularly relevant to what you're working on. So all of that essentially is just to uh, show you the structure of Yamdo, give you a sense of how the system is organized. And now within a project, we can start looking at the key tools. And you can see here that we break things into general tools and some more film specific tools and department specific tools uh, as we move forward. But the starting point, uh, like, like in any production, is the crew. And you can see here that in Yamdo, you can add the entire crew. You can see each of the people involved uh, and the department they work in, the position they hold. So it's very clear to everyone who they're working with and what those people uh, are doing. So that's a very good starting point. When you're inviting a user to the system, all you need to do is add an email address, their first and last name, and assign them a position. And because you only have to invite someone once, we think it's important to do this right. So if I was to add someone as, for example, a line producer, you can see that Yamdo will automatically generate the access rights that it feels someone in that position should have. So it's only a prompt, it's a suggestion, uh, you know, to make people's lives easier as they add people to the production. You can see here that I can see the uh, access that people have to the various areas in Yamdo. And for example, if this line producer, for, for whatever reason, uh, should not see the cast area, I can hide this or I can give them read-only access or I can allow them to edit the information. So you have these three different access levels before inviting someone and afterwards as well, because you have a full list of all of the access rights right here, and you can edit these at any point. And of course, the editing rights for these kind of uh, tools and these capabilities will be limited to high level members of the production, like administrators and producers. Obviously, people who are working in you know, smaller departments will not have the access to change information uh, as they wish to at any point. It's really limited to high level members of the production. So you have this capability. You can also manage this for files and documents. So you can go very granular and make sure you have complete control over who has access to every piece of information in the system itself. And also here you can see that once someone is added to Yamdo in the first place, 
uh, once they're added in any project, you can reuse their information and add them very quickly, quickly from your database. So we have that. We also have external contacts who are people who uh, you add to a project um, as uh, you know, basically uh, you know, people that you might contact via a, a mailing list. These are not active users, but you can keep their information within the system and that allows you to send them certain pieces of information when you need to. Um, as well as that, one of the key things we have in Yamdu are the user groups. And these are like group chats that you might find, find on uh, other platforms. What this allows you to do is communicate directly within Yamdu itself. So it's not only a collaboration hub, it also allows you to communicate easily. And when you create a department and add any people to that department, Yamdu will automatically generate user groups so that, for example, if there are five people in the camera department, I can communicate with all of them in one message at any point in any area whenever I want. And that's you know very important for getting important information across or not having certain people having uh, more information than others. And you can also create your own custom user groups too. If there's certain people that you like to bounce ideas off or you need a little private group to communicate uh, away from the noise of the production itself. And finally here in the crew area, uh, you have the ability to create units. And normally these would be the classic situations like maybe a second unit or a foreign unit, uh, you know, for uh, capturing images, you know, unrelated to the main shoot itself. Right now we're also showing that, you know, you have the option, especially when you have to uh, take COVID into account to separate the crew in certain ways. Uh, you can break them up into different pods or groups so that they're not interacting with each other as often as they would be and if for some reason anyone wants to get ill, uh, you could make sure that other people were not in the same vicinity at the same time to manage your team. So that is the crew area as a starting point in Yamdu. It's to make sure every person uh, involved in the project knows where they stand, who they're working with, and that their access rights can be managed effectively. The next area uh, in the general tools is files and documents. And this is where you can save any information that you think is relevant to the project. So you can see that we organize these into rooms and objects, uh, which is basically the same structure as folders and files. And within these rooms, you can see that if I click into development, for example, you can add images, you can add PDF files, Excel sheets, Word files, uh, you can add photographs, you can add uh, videos too. There's an inbuilt video player. So you can add any information that you think is relevant to the project and share it here. Uh, for example, something like the script, and you know, this goes to illustrate here that with Yamdu, you can import scripts from Final Draft or Celtics or Fountain or even PDF files as long as they're in standard script format. And as well as this, as you can see, you can manage the access rights directly within files and documents itself. So you can always control who sees information. So I think that's important. You can also version the uh, information too. So if you're adding a new version of the script, you can keep the same file name, but all previous versions will be saved to reference at any point. You can read the script right here, and in the details view, you can take a look at all of the earlier versions of the script that existed. So it's a very clear way to you know, have a sense of how you've progressed forward and what the previous versions look like. And of course, no information is lost, you're, and you're always working with the latest version of the script. And as I mentioned, we also have the inbuilt uh, video player that allows you to communicate with visual information very effectively. Because, for example, you can see here uh, if I want to play a video file, I can play it directly within the system. I can choose the playback rate and the uh, quality. I can write comments and I can timestamp those comments too to say that at a certain point it's too dark or bright or too loud or there's a boom in the shot or wherever it might be. So I can manage the information like that, I can add new versions, I can download this file and I can send it via email as well, which I think is important and obviously with visual productions it's important to be able to work with visual information. So that's files and documents, it's a way to share information uh, with the people who need to see it with carefully controlled access rights. We also have here the announcement tool, and we use the loudspeaker as the symbol for this. That's because it's used when you need to communicate important information quickly. First of all, it guarantees that an email will be sent with the information, and you can use this to you know, welcome some, someone to Love at Sunset, or for example, if you have an insurance form that needs to be filled out by all members 
of the crew, you can send an announcement like that. And when people open the email that they're sent, they're redirected back to this page. So if they have comments, it can be a shared space where everyone can be up to speed with the latest information immediately, and it's shared very effectively across the entire team. We also have, of course, a tasking tool, one of the key general tools we have in Yamdu. And obviously in any production, there are a myriad of things that need to be done, that need to be taken care of and managed, and that need to be assigned to various people to uh, complete. So for example, let's say we're working on a project and there is a costume issue. In Yamdu, I can specify you know, what this is, what the situation is and what needs to be done. I can assign groups, as we saw earlier, uh, or crew members to this uh, task. So I can say exactly who it is that needs to take care of this situation. And once I've added them, and I'll just add Dan, for example, here, um, I can set a deadline and assign this task to a section two. So it's very clear to everyone what they're working on, who they're working with, when it needs to be done, and what it's related to. And they can get to work immediately. So if it is a costume issue, um, you know, I could add some images and files. If I'm the person that created this task, I could add some ideas of what it is I'm looking for, maybe from a painting or from a previous movie or something like this. And then anyone who's working on this could share information they find here. If they're on their cell phone and they're in a flea market and they find a dress that might fit, they could very easily just upload it on their phone directly here. And everyone who's working will be able to access it and view it as well. And of course, the task is a communication hub in itself. So right here, everyone can communicate, we can tag each other, we can ask for feedback from other people, and it makes it very easy to make sure that people can communicate. And rather than using something like email to do this, where you end up with a number of different threads uh, with different groups of people, everything in Yamdu is related to the thing it's, uh, it's uh, you know, tasked with that it's uh, related to. So you can see that you know the costume information and the dialogue about that is related to the costume task. There's also the ability to create subtasks within Yamdu as well if the work needs to be delegated uh, a bit more. And also you can mark the task it's completed when it's done uh, so that you know it doesn't appear uh, in the list of you know currently active tasks. And also here you can see that all of the tasks that you've worked on are listed very clearly. So you can get a very clear sense of you know, what's been finished, what hasn't, what's overdue, what is uncompleted, and everything that's already been done. So that is the tasking tool. It shares the information effectively. You can see that we have different deadlines for each of the tasks here, and they also appear in the project calendar. So of course in Yamdu, we provide one central calendar for each project, which feeds into the overview calendar we saw at the start of the demonstration. And here you can see that we have lots of information. We have some information about the production step and stage that we're currently working on. As you can see, we're kind of halfway through the final draft and we're moving on to casting and location scouting in a couple of weeks. I can see the meetings that I'm involved in right here, and I can see the deadline for the tasks that I'm working on. So each person always sees the information that's relevant to them. And when I want to, if something changes, I can move uh, the uh, meetings around very easily, first of all. Uh, when I'm creating an event, it's very straightforward too. I can select a time, I can add a title to say, for example, that this is a uh, production meeting. Um, I can also, if I want to, um, add a description, just describing what this entails. I can add participants, so I can say I need the heads of the departments involved. Uh, I want to add myself as a participant. And then I have the option to add locations. We use Google's algorithm, so you can add real-world locations if you need to, or you can just use you know, Company Office 2B if it's just something in-house. You can also add categories. So for example, you can say that this is a production meeting. And when you say that, it just differentiates these types of meetings so that you can filter for that information later. You can edit the visibility to make sure that you know nobody who doesn't need to see this sees it. And you can also suggest several dates. So I can say that you know if people are very busy and I need to give them certain options, instead of using something like Doodle, I can just say that you know one option might be uh, from 9 a.m., uh, let's say, next Monday, or 10.15 to 11.15 next, uh, next Monday, 
as one suggestion and maybe the same time the week afterwards as well. So I can add these two suggestions and when I create the event, I'll now have two date suggestions that people can look at and vote on. And you can see they're slightly faint because they're not set in stone just yet. If I click on either one of these, now I can see that I and the rest of the people involved can vote for the date and time that suits them best. So I can say, okay, today works best, or Monday next week works best for me. I can see how everybody else votes, and then I can accept the date, the date once it's clear which one works for the most amount of people. And also, when you add participants, even when you're creating an event in Yamdu, you will automatically be notified if they have a clash or a conflict at the same time across any of the projects they're working on. So it's not just taking information from this project into account, it's everything across all projects. And I think that's important to make sure that nobody creates something when someone is not free. So just returning to the calendar again, you can see that we now have our production meeting set. You also can filter this calendar, just like the overview calendar, to find the information you're looking for. And you can also subscribe with this calendar uh, to Google or Apple or Microsoft Outlook. And what that means is that you can export all of the information from Yamdu to any of these calendars. They will update whenever any changes occur in Yamdu, and you can just keep track of that information somewhere else whenever you need to. And throughout Yamdu, you have the ability to create PDF exports. You can create one if you want for the calendar and for lots of other areas. It's a very green system, of course, but if you do need a paper copy or just a copy that you can create to send outside the system, you can do it very easily if you need to. So they were the general tools. And I think now is a good time to get a sense of the, uh, the key planning and scheduling tools and the film specific tools. And the starting point for this uh, naturally enough, would be the production scenario. You can create as many production scenarios as you want, and then when you're ready, you can share one with the team so everyone can see what kind of structure the project has moving forward. And you can see here that I can add all of the steps in each of the stages that make up my production from the first draft of the script, because again, this is a feature movie, but it could uh, also be a treatment for a documentary or for a commercial. I can add the steps right here. And when I add these, it will automatically generate a Gantt chart that shows how the project is due to move forward over time. So you can see that first of all, I can zoom out and take a long view and see that I'm working over the course of maybe three and a half months here. And I can see each of the steps and stages and how they interact. I can also add dependencies between steps too to make it very clear uh, that you know one thing needs to finish before another thing can begin. And I can also roll with the punches and make steps longer or shorter, move them backwards or forwards if I need to, uh, whenever I need to, just to make sure that you know it's very clear um, what kind of production we're working on and what stage we're at. So if my final draft of the script has to be truncated a bit or move forwards or backwards, I can do that and Yamdu can factor those changes in and update the information immediately uh, for all of the people who have access to this information. It will update in each of their calendars too. So you have that ability. You also have the ability to add users directly to a step in the process. So if I need to add someone to the first draft of the script, I can assign them to it. I can set them tasks uh, in relation to this. And it's a good way to make sure that someone is clear that you know we're working on this step for uh, this long. This is the deadline before it finishes. These are the things that you need to do. So you can really manage very carefully how your resources are used uh, over the course of the production. And also when you want to add a production step, all you need to do is you know, create your own custom step, first of all, if you, if you need to, or you can use the drop-down menu here and use one of our uh, uh, template steps as well. So you can select, for example, a final cut. You can say that you want to use template dependencies, and uh, that means that Yamdu can understand how things before this step and afterwards interact with this step. I can actually calculate the start and the end based on those dependencies. So I can tell Yamdu that this step is going to take five days and it will automatically figure out the dates that uh, are involved where this would slot in. So I'm going to say that it excludes weekends as well. It immediately changes the dates right here. And then when I click create, my final cut will slot in in post-production where it needs to be. And you can see it's right here now. It's been added to the Gantt chart and it's right where it needs to be in the course of my production. So this tool makes it very easy to make sure that everyone has a very clear sense of where the project is, and it makes it easy to react again. 
uh, whenever anything changes. And of course, what this means is that you can reuse these templates whenever you want. If you like it for this project, you can use the exact same steps and structure on your next project and just rejig the dates to make sure that everything matches up. But it's saving a huge amount of time that you might spend laboriously creating these things, whether in Excel or some other tool. It's all very straightforward and fast in the Amdu. So uh, just to show you as well, you can change the view, of course, to see just the steps without the Gantt chart view. You can even see the tasks that are involved in each of these steps. And you can also PDF export this as well if you need to with all steps, uh, with tasks, with all key information attached. So we really wanna make it easy that if you need something for the production office wall, you can generate this very quickly. And uh, I'll just show you quickly what this looks like when it does generate but it just allows you to work with this information effectively. And you can see that it may print out in a few sheets of paper, but you can zoom in and out as you need to, to get a real sense over time of how this project moves forward day by day. So that is how you can generate this information within the Amdu in the production schedule. Um, that information uh, is shared in the calendar so that everyone knows exactly where they are. So now we need to move forward and think about the kind of content we're working with in the Amdu when it comes to creating a breakdown. And the first one I'll show you is working with scripted content. So if you're working on a movie, for example, you can import scripts, as I mentioned, from Final Draft, Celtex, Fountain, and even PDF files. And when you import the script, Yamdu can read this information and it will organize that information within the system. So right away, you can see here that it's automatically found the uh, scenes, the uh, different sets, and information like whether it's day, night, interior, exterior, and color coded accordingly. So if I click into, for example, scene one here, we can see that we have all key information. We have the scene description, the ID, the environment, the set. We have the characters, they've been pulled directly out of the um, script, and we can add all of the important breakdown elements that we need right here. We can do it manually if we wish to, uh, but we have some automatic options too, because you can show and tag the script. So first of all, I can see the script here for scene one. And if I find something like the old map here, I can select this. I can say that this is a prop. Um, and then I can link it with other elements and tag all mentions in the script. So that basically anytime the old map is mentioned, it will appear automatically in my breakdown. I don't have to worry about this thing again. So you can see it's been added to my breakdown here. When I scroll down, we have the old map and that information is spread out to the departments in question. So the old map immediately goes to production design. They can see that there's something new that has arrived and they can get to work. And I'll just quickly move and show you this from a production design perspective. The old map appears, they can jump in and see that, okay, we need to find an old map. They can add some suggestions for what might be good options. And then the people who are involved who can edit this information can vote for the best option and ultimately select the one that works best. So for each element in the breakdown, you can see in the department view what people are working with. So you have that. Uh, from a production design point of view. Obviously, we've seen here that we also have the characters. And in this case, we have the character James, but we haven't cast him yet. So when we jump in and take a look at the character James, we can see that we do have some actor suggestions. So maybe the casting team have been adding some. There's been some dialogue here about who would work best for this role. We can vote for who we think is the best option. We can reject suggestions if they're not quite right, if we worked with Jason before and it was a nightmare then we can forget about him and just focus on some other people. And for example, if we ultimately think that Jack Jameson is the best option, we can fix him as cast, and he is now added as our character James. And it's clear immediately to everyone working in the production, we have an actor for the character James. What do we know about this actor? You can go and take a look right here. First of all, there are some private pieces of information that will only be seen by high level members of the staff, like dietary needs, date of birth and address. But for most people, they can see, okay, we have a headshot. We have some appearances and skills right here. He can play 30 to 50. He has certain skills. There are certain things he will do for the production. And we can also see his sizes, which is obviously very useful for the costume department. We can add notes. We can see his day out of days once the shooting schedule is created. And we can, of course, PDF export that as well whenever we need to. And we can see contracts, links, off periods, tasks, all of these things very clearly. 
So all of that can be managed effectively in relation to every actor that's working on the project. And we can see the entire cast here for the scenes we've added so far. Um, we can also see all of the actors we've considered for this project so far. And of course, we can import actors from our database at any point too. So it's dynamic information you can reuse with all key data attached and saved for you whenever you need to use it. And of course, if you're working with non-scripted content, you can work with other talents, just to differentiate between someone who's portraying a character and someone who's a talent or a performer or a dancer or singer or whatever else it might be. And speaking of other forms of content, I'll just switch quickly to a different project so you can see what this looks like. And firstly here, as I mentioned earlier, you have the ability in Yamdu to work with episodic features. So in this case, I have a five episode series right here. And if I want to, I can attach information directly to individual episodes or to all episodes at once, just to make sure that information is managed effectively and it's not shared with anyone who shouldn't see it or with a, an episode that's not related to another episode and will only uh, an information that might be shared would only lead to confuse people. So when it comes to working with non-scripted information, first of all, you can work with shots. And you can see here that we can upload any of the shots that we want to use to map out what the visual content of our project will look like. So I've added some shots here for a commercial featuring a magician in front of a theater set. And you can see that with each of the shots, there is the ability to add information as we saw earlier uh, in the scripted breakdown, the exact same way you can add any details that are important. You can also use this information to create an AV script. So especially for things like music videos and also for commercials and sometimes as well for documentaries, you can map certain things out like this shot based, uh, you know, linking the visual and audio information like so. You can also storyboard the information so that the shots you add can be seen very clearly. You can get a sense of the progression of the, um, the uh, piece of content. You can export all of this as a shot list or as a storyboard uh, if you wish to. And as well as this, if you're working with non-scripted and non-shot based information, you can work with content items. And obviously the first thing that might spring to mind for content items would be something like a documentary or interviews or behind the scenes footage. And this means that if you've got an interview, for example, with a documentary subject or with the lead actor on a project, you can create that piece of content right here. You can say that this is an interview with a certain character or actor or talent and uh, add all of the other elements you need to here as well. So what we aim to do is provide a system where you can work with any type of content, no matter whether it's scripted, non-scripted, shot-based, content uh, item-based or AV script. And I think Yamdu so far has proved very effective in the way that it allows you to work with these things and also to mix and match this information as you move forward and create shooting schedules and call sheets. So I'll just move back to Love at Sunset to show you a couple of the final tools that I want to showcase for you today. The first one is the uh, shooting schedule. Uh, but actually before that, sorry, quickly, I'll just show you as well that we've seen the cast, we've seen the production design and costumes and makeup follow the same structure as that. When you import a script, all of the sets are also imported and added separately to locations and sets. And you can then assign those to filming locations. And we can see for each of our filming locations here, you know, we can use our database or we can create new ones. So if for example, we're shooting at Ari Studios, we can add this location, add an address, Using Google's algorithm, you can generate a map with the address showing exactly where this is, so it's clear to everyone. You can add images and files to give people a sense of what this looks like. You can add contacts and off periods and sub locations and all the other key pieces of content as well so that it's saved, it's retained, everyone knows exactly what they're working with and uh, it's very easy to get a sense of where you need to be at a certain time. So that's important just to kind of uh, point out that you can add the breakdown for whatever kind of content. The department specific information is shared with the people who need to see it. And then you can build up all of the elements you need so that you can eventually move forward and create your shooting schedule. And you can see that again, you can create draft schedules. You're not under pressure to create something perfect the first time. You can play around, you can figure out all the variables 
And when you're happy with something, even if it's just a working schedule, you can share that with the team. So I've got a current schedule right here that I'm working on and I haven't actually started in this case. So I can click edit here and you'll see that whatever content I'm working with, whether scenes or shots or content items, uh, they appear right here in the sidebar. So, you know, I can reorder these by set or ID or by character, just to help me get a better sense of what might be right when it comes to sequencing. Uh, or I can just also select the uh, scenes that I want to add and drag them over here to my shooting phase. So right away now you can see that I have all of my scenes organized right here very clearly. And I can, first of all, select the columns that should be displayed when it comes to working on my strip board here. I can decide what's relevant, what helps me decide the right sequence for shooting, uh, whether that's you know department related information or shot related. And once I'm happy with that, I can get to work. First of all, I can drag and drop the information. I can change the sequence, I can move it around. If I prefer playing like this, then I can do that very easily. I can also, if I want to, reorder the strips. So I can reorder this uh, based on set or location. Oftentimes you're not gonna be shooting in sequence, you're gonna be shooting by set or by location. So I can reorder things by that information. I can say, okay, let's reorder by set, day then night, interior then exterior. And you can see that Yamdu has immediately done that for me. We're not worried about the ID sequence anymore. We're just working with the actual sets themselves. As well as this, I can automatically add daybreaks. So I can say that I need a daybreak, you know, every five pages of the script or two pages or whatever it is we think makes sense as a starting point or if we kind of get a feel for it as production moves forward. You can also work with estimated time and schedule duration as well. And I'll just show you quickly that if I say every five pages of the script, Yamdu has broken this into two shooting days in this case. And of course, I can also add day breaks manually. I can just add one here and I can drag it up wherever it needs to be and say that, okay, my first day shooting are these four scenes right here. And maybe I also need something like a lunch break, for example. I can add that at the right point in the day. I can change the start time and the end time. These will be dictated by the estimated time that I choose for each of the scenes that I work with. So again, whether it's scenes, content items, or shots, we can mix and match all of this uh, different types, all of these different types of content right here. And basically, once I'm happy with the sequence like this, I can save this. And once my shooting schedule is saved, I can go back to view mode. And first of all, I can generate PDF exports if I want to with uh, different layouts, with different information. I can also generate day out of days. So I'm not spending, again, hours working on who's on set each day at what time and uh, how that looks. I can generate that immediately using Yamdu's information to save a lot of time. And as well as this, I can create customized exports too with the information that I think is important. And also this is the point where Yamdu's integration with showbiz budgeting, of course, uh, is important because right now, once I've created my shooting schedule, I can immediately export that information uh, and import it to showbiz budgeting. So I can then start working on the budget and all of the key information from the breakdown, uh, from the shooting schedule, from the uh, departments will be attached and you can work with that. So this is the shooting schedule. The last thing I wanna show you very quickly is how you can use this to generate a call sheet. And you can see here that creating a call sheet in Yamdu is very fast. It's designed to auto-populate all of the key information. So all I need to do is select my shooting day. I'm gonna go with shooting day number one here and click next. Then I can decide if I wanna uh, assign the call sheet to a unit or change the title, but I'll just click next again. And now you can see that you can work uh, when you wanna create a call sheet, you can create one for scouting, for rehearsal, for ADR, for travel. You can even use an existing call sheet template that you've worked on before, or you can upload files and just use Yamdu to distribute a call sheet you've created somewhere else. But by far the more, the, you know, the most advantageous way to create a call sheet is simply to click on shooting day. Because when I do this, it will take the information from the breakdown, all of the scene details, all of the shooting schedule information, and all of the department specific information, and put it together for me in an auto-populated call sheet. And first of all, I can choose the design that I want. So we have a lot of different designs to choose from. We'll be adding more shortly. And you can see here that, you know, I just select the one that I want. 
I can change the time zone and the time format. I can change the title and add recipients. And then you can see here that I have the uh, dynamic call sheet that I'm working with. I have the scenes, the characters, the department information. And I can edit this information right here in the call sheet itself. So I can start editing. If anything is not quite right, I can change it right here. Uh, also, I can move things around. So if I think calls makes more sense underneath the PDF header, I can move it down here. Also, I can say that, okay, I didn't add locations yet. So we're shooting at Ari Studios, all four of these scenes. I want to see a map. I can add the route, the parking, or the catering information. And then you can see that it's added. And it will automatically add the weather at that location and the nearest hospital, again, using Google's algorithm. Uh, and also, any other elements that I think are important, I can add by clicking the plus symbol, whether they are text fields or page breaks or crew calls or anything else that I deem necessary. So I can create my perfect call sheet right before the first day of shooting. When I'm happy with this, I can save it as a draft that I can edit later. Um, and once it's the final uh, version, once I'm very happy with it, I can then decide to mark this as final and send it out to all recipients. And when I do that, it will be sent via email, uh, not as a no reply at Yamdu, but from my email address, from the creator's email address, so that it's clear to everyone, this is the actual call sheet we're working with. And I can see the finished call sheet right here. I can download this as a PDF file if I want to have a copy or create a paper copy or share it outside the system. Um, I can also see the sending report. And just to point out, when this is sent, each person that it's sent to can confirm attendance in the email. Their call time is very clearly displayed. And they can also uh, see the actual PDF um, call sheet attached as well. And also, you can see here that uh, with real email addresses, rather than the fake ones we use, you can also see uh, if it's been sent to someone, if they have received it, and if they have viewed it. So you have that ability to make sure that everyone is up to speed with the latest information within the Amdu. So those are the key features and the key tools of the system. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at them with me. Finally, just to show you uh, the different plans we offer in Yamdu, the uh, first thing to show you is that you can work, first of all, with paper project plans. And that means you can work individually with different plans, whether it's starter, advanced, or advanced plus, whether you need uh, episodic features or unlimited users, whatever works best. And I mean, that means that there's a kind of a price point for every type of production uh, to start working within Yamdu. There is also, of course, the ability to work with company level plans. And the advantage of this is that when you finish a project, you don't have to delete it or you don't have to cancel your subscription to stop paying for something you're not working on. Everything you work on with these, because you have unlimited projects, they're all saved. And that information goes to your database with the company and enterprise plans so that you're building your own company database passively as you work on projects with information you can reuse whenever you want to at any point. And of course, we offer onboarding and there are episodic features added. And uh, there will be some new features coming down the line pretty shortly in relation to these plans as well. You can also uh, extend your storage at any point whenever you need to and decide upon the right amount of users for whatever project you're working on. So those are the different plans that we offer. Just to show you as well, because I mentioned at the beginning that uh, we have some things that are coming up uh, pretty shortly. So you can see here kind of a sneak preview of what we're adding uh, in the coming weeks and months. We will be adding advanced resource planning. Um, so that is something that is not too far away from coming online, which will mean that you can manage, you know, not just the uh, equipment and editing suites, but also human resources and plan them, uh, plan how you manage these things more effectively within the system. We'll also be adding an approval and showcase window and feature so that you can share information with clients outside the system, just very easily share important details with the people who need to see them. Um, you can also see here that uh, the last thing I showed you in the demonstration, the call sheet, we are currently working on reimagining this and changing the way that this is organized. We're in the middle of the process right now and it will be coming on board very shortly. We're really looking forward to launching this, but it will uh, add you know, many additional features and make sure that you know, there is a call sheet to fit the model for uh, all of the different projects that might be worked on within Yamdu. So that's something that will be coming very soon. And also uh, carrying on from that, 
the information that we generate in the call sheet and that's uh, created in the breakdown and shooting schedule and other areas will soon uh, be usable to create a, a production report. So we'll be adding semi-automated production reports to Yamdu uh, in the near future as well. And I think that's going to be a bit of a game changer as well, because you can uh, streamline the creation of these, these pieces of information that often take a long time to put together. So that's kind of a sneak peek. None of that stuff is uh, online yet, but it will be there very shortly. And I think that it will be uh, very exciting to see these things come online. Um, so at this point, maybe I'd like to kind of switch back to Steve and ask if anybody has any questions they'd like to ask uh, in relation to the demonstration so far. Yeah, we have. Uh... Many questions have been asked, so I'm sure we won't get through every all of them, but we'll go through some of them. Um, to start, uh, can Yamdu calendars be customized with graphics such as logos so they can be made into client-facing docs? Um, so basically there are customizations for how things look within Yamdu in the project settings. Um, Within the calendar, you could add images and files, not in the sense that is being asked there, but I can take and make a note of that. And if the person who asked that question wants to uh, send it to me in an email, then I can respond uh, with more information uh, very quickly if that's possible. Okay, well, we have that info. All right, and uh, next, all the information that is saved, is that accessible when I'm offline? Does it get saved on my desktop or it only live with you? So Yamdu is cloud-based, it's an online tool. There may be an online, offline version in the future, that's something we have considered, but you do have the ability to uh, download the project as a zip file at any point. So you could do that if you wanted to make sure that the information you've added is accessible offline uh, in local storage. You can do that very easily uh, within the actual My Projects area, just select the project and download it here. And obviously all of the key details and uh, documents and files that you add can be downloaded at any point as well, whenever you wish to. All right. Uh, next, is the actor and location database something we can input or is it pulling it from a different web database? So that is information that is uh, drawn from all of the separate projects that you work on when you generate it. It's not using a database, it's your own information. So for example, if I'm working with Al Goldman on a project, I can create this actor, add images, add contact details, add what that person will do for the production, some of their attributes, and then reuse that on any future project. And I can also create actors um, independent of projects as well in the uh, database itself. All right, um, this might be repetitive. Where is the project data stored, local or cloud? So Yamdu is cloud-based. We use Microsoft Azure and all of the information is stored geo-redundantly so that you know if one server uh, cannot be accessed, the information will immediately be taken from another one. So we've had uh, almost zero downtime in the entire uh, run of the company. And uh, essentially your information is very safely managed by Microsoft Azure. Um, does everyone involved in a project have to purchase Yamdu? Uh, no, so only the person that, or, or the company itself, uh, needs to actually purchase it. There's only one purchase, and then the users that are uh, allowed with that project type uh, do not have to pay, they can just be invited. So for example, if I select Yamdu company, I can add 15 users to a project, and they can be any 15 users I want. Just like we saw at the beginning, you can invite the user, add the information uh, that's necessary, the email address, first and last name, and assign them a position, and they will not pay at all. It's only the person who pays for the plan that uh, has to pay. All right. Can you create your own files slash categories or subcategories within Yamdu dashboard and templates? Uh, yes. So. There are a lot of different options when it comes to this. Just to quickly run through them, uh, I'll just jump directly into, uh, for example, Love at Sunset again. And when it comes to the files and documents area, this is entirely customizable. You can order the, organize that information however you want. You can delete rooms, you can create new ones, and you can add whatever objects you want with full access right management. And in relation to the template side, the call sheet, for example, is one of the key things where you can create the ideal call sheet on the first day and reuse it for every step of the production, uh, every day of the production after that, or for every single project your company works on. 
So that is a, a huge time saver because it's all of the same information in the same format, just uh, you know relevant to the actual shooting day in question. And also the production calendar is something that can be reused again and again. So th those are two key areas where you can take a structure, reuse it, and save hours and hours of time when you're creating things in Yamdu. Okay. All right, then next, can you hook Yamdu to a global database? The purpose being if production company A entered their crew, then production company B can use that info and not have to re-enter it all. The initial setup is painful until you get a well-populated, it would be, it would seem. So right now, the way to import people would be uh, individually. And we think that's important in relation to the access rights, but we are working on adding more options as well so that there might be a CSV import, which would streamline that process and make it faster. Uh, something like that will be coming online at a certain point in the future. So I think that is subject to change and it will be closer to what the questioner's uh, idealized version will be soon. Okay. Are features under access rights automatically populated based on standard industry practices, or does the user have to add and delete preferences for each individual? So it's standard industry practices, uh, as dictated by Yamdu. Again, just to make sure that it's you know effectively managed. So if I scroll down here and select someone as a director of photography, you can see that there are certain access rights given dependent on what we think that person should be able to see. But the main thing, of course, is that, that those can be overwritten right now or afterwards. I can give them access to you know, everything. I can hide information. I can give read-only access. It's customizable, but there's always a template for each position just to speed up the process. All right, next. Is Yamdu developing post-production, post-workflow, so entire project can be managed in Yamdu? So, uh, of course, one of our most important partnerships and the, the company that we're powered by is ARI, and we have an integration with ARI WebGate so that you can actually manage your dailies within Yamdu using WebGate. And I'll just show you quickly that, um, just to show you the structure of WebGate right here. I don't, I'm not sure if I actually have content to show you, but you can see that you can work on your dailies, you can import these, you can communicate and comment, you can vote. Uh, you can direct link the information to other people. So with WebGate, you can essentially add post to everything that Yandu offers and take care of the entire production within one interface. In, WebGate is a separate subscription, but the two systems can be linked together and managed under the Yandu interface. Okay, great. All right, couple more. Um, for the task function, can you create a template of tasks that could be used for each new project? Yes, so you can reuse tasks, you can use the same tasks. So again, for example, if on the first project, there are 10 things that uh, you need to do for that project and on all subsequent projects, then you can reuse that by creating a template uh, for that project and those tasks will appear as they did previously. All you need to do is just update who's involved and what the deadlines are. All right, um, then does the calendar sync with Outlook? Yes, so you can take your production calendar uh, from each of your projects, you can subscribe, and you can export the information uh, from Yamdu to Google, Apple, Outlook, and that information will update as any changes occur in Yamdu. Uh, is there a Yamdu app for the phone? So we have Yamdu Notifier, it's a notification tool. Uh, we decided to go the, the opposite direction to make Yamdu um, basically uh, give Yamdu the ability to work with all major devices and browsers. So the system is completely responsive, which means that it works the same way on your mobile phone in browser uh, as it would in a desktop or laptop, which means that no features are limited and you can do the exact same, same things across all of these different uh, devices and browsers. So the app we have is for notifications, but you can use the system in the browser on your mobile phone. Uh, and so last question I think we have time for. Can you create weekends to be any day of the week? Uh, yes, so I'll just show you here that in the production calendar, if we go to settings, you can choose what a weekday, uh, what a weekend is right here. Great. All right, so we're running out of time. There's many more questions that will respond to people directly. Um, 
and also want you to know if uh, this webinar is being recorded so we can get you links uh, so you can rewatch it or if you want to give it to an associate. Uh, if you want that link or further info, just so you know, you can reach out to me at steve at mediaservices.com. Also, we can get you a link to run a trial version of Yamdu. And uh, if you have any other questions on any of uh, our other software products, you can reach out to me as well or our payroll services, and we can hook you up uh, with uh, Mick to uh, if you need a personal demo as well. So I want to thank everybody for coming to the webinar. Uh, and we hope to see you again soon at another one of our webinar programs. Thanks very much. Okay. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, Steve. All right. Bye-bye.